Hello, this is Deepal Dalal from Desert Foot Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. I have Dr. Dane Wukic with me, who just gave an excellent presentation on the uh, mortality rate with amputations and complications that may arise. Thank you so much for your lecture, and thank you for being willing to be interviewed by us. So my first question to you is, um, as a resident at least, I, I remember recently when I, my first time I had to talk to somebody about an amputation and how difficult it was. How can we prep our patients when they're about to get their first amputation? I think the key is that you have to have that discussion several times before you actually really need to do it. There are very, very few cases where you have to do an amputation immediately or urgently. If somebody has infection and their life is at stake, then you might have to do it. But most of the things that we do become semi-elective and you kind of talk to them over time and you educate them. And ultimately, my experience has been that when the patient makes the decision themselves, then it really turns out the best. Do you ever recommend them seeing like a therapist beforehand or having a multidisciplinary approach to help them prepare for that amputation? Absolutely. I think in an ideal setting, you could have them see a prosthetist, the person who's going to make the prosthesis. You can have them see the physical medicine and rehabilitation physician who runs the amputation clinic. And probably most importantly, if you have the opportunity, is to have them see a patient who's undergone an amputation themselves. Nothing can have the impact as another patient who's been through it. That's great insight. Um, so I guess my other question is too, you talked about quality of life after an amputation. How can we help our patients improve their quality of life after they have an amputation? The single most important way is to get them to ambulate. I think the comfort of a prosthesis is important. In patients with diabetes, they have neuropathy, so oftentimes they don't have pain. But if you do an amputation on a non-diabetic patient, they may actually have pain at their prosthesis. So having a prosthesis that's not painful that allows them to ambulate is really the key. And I think that how can we do that? Number one is we can maybe perhaps, if we're anticipating an amputation in four to six weeks, if you will, a major amputation, send them to physical therapy. We call that prehab now in orthopedics before a major operation. They go there, they learn exercises to do, they strengthen themselves, they learn what type of um, mobility device is best for them. Is it going to be crutches? Is it going to be a walker? Is it going to be a scooter? So I think that those kinds of things make addition. I think you get them in their optimal health health, you know, but really cardiovascular function and, and muscle strengthening is important. And recognize that a lot of patients who have um, diabetic foot problems that are going to need an amputation, they really are malnourished. You know, they're, even though they might be overweight, they're, they're really malnourished. So I think nutrition plays an important. I think a holistic approach to a patient really makes a lot of sense. Therapist, I think in some cases, some of them might need to see a mental health therapist, if you will, to talk about it. Because my patients... It's one of, it's, they fear amputation more than they do dying. So it's a very devastating thing. You actually talked about that in your lecture too, how patients, their greatest fear they rank usually as an amputation over death. So how can we kind of ease their concerns at this time? Um, you know, when they're, if they come into your office and they say, I would rather die than have this amputation, is there anything you can say to them to help them? Absolutely. I think. One of the things is, having done that study, is I can actually give them a copy of my article and say, look. Yeah. And then the second thing is tell them, hey, if you, if you walk after this surgery, six months from now, it's likely you're going to come in and tell me you wouldn't have waited this long. But I think the key thing is to have a good discussion with them and recognize that a lot of people, they fear amputation uh, because they think that their life is over. But also, I think culturally, there are certain cultures where losing a body part and whether you believe in heaven or whatever your religious belief, people do not culturally want to lose anything on their body. And I think, um, you know, I don't know what it would be like for a woman to lose a breast from breast surgery, but I think it's probably a similar psychological uh, event that, you know, it's just very tragic for them. But I think you have to educate them. And again, if you can have them see somebody that's been through it and they see them walking, I say, oh my God, that could be me. That makes a big difference. But I think you have to understand the cultural. And certainly, certain cultures are very, very resistant to amputation. 
And one of the other things you talked about in your lecture is that a lot of studies show that amputations are, you know, patients who have get an amputation will have a higher risk of mortality rate. So one of the things you talked about is that it's actually more so their cardiovascular and renal function versus just getting the amputation alone. Can you speak more about that? Sure. And so the, the key to preserving a successful life after amputation is activity. If you think about it, for anybody with diabetes who has neuropathy that has a problem, cardiovascular exercise is important. Well, if you are a patient who undergoes an amputation and you have cardiovascular disease and you basically sit in your chair, you lose cardiac function. If you're a patient that goes and ambulates and starts exercising again, which is a form of exercise, does upper body things, you preserve, if not improve, your cardiovascular function, which is associated with mortality. It's no different than any other patient with coronary disease, vascular disease, uh, neuropathy, etc. You want to preserve their function, and that allows them to exercise. And, and normal walking uh, is actually great. When you have a prosthesis and you have um, an amputation, it actually increases your cardiac reserve for requiring you to walk by 20%, maybe 25%. So it would be like a patient with diabetes ambulating that it's almost like they're walking on a treadmill with a little bit of elevation. So their cardiac function is actually improving. And, and so I think it's an important thing. It's really about function and getting them back to ambulation. Ambulation allows them to go in the community, do all those things which help your mental quality of life as well. Okay. And I guess my last question for you is, as um, you know, somebody who's been in this profession for a long time, do you have any advice for a young practitioner who may be getting into the field of limb salvage and how to talk to your patients? Well, wow, that, that's a great topic and we could talk hours about that, if not days. It's actually, it's one, it boils down to one simple word, empathy. Being able to put yourself in that patient's shoes for that moment and recognize how important it is. And it's hard to be empathetic with somebody that you haven't personally experienced, but you try and put yourself in their particular situation because all that they're focused in on at life at that point is their, their illness and their leg. But I think in anything we do in medicine, uh, really the key word nowadays is empathy. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. This is again Deepal Dalal at Desert Foot Conference. Please stay tuned for more segments to come.